Welcome back, Spokane, to another episode of Evo Real Talks. I'm your host, Matt Side. And I'm Jessica Side. And we are nearing the end of summer, Jessica. What do you think about that? I don't want to talk about it. I know you don't. I actually really, I really don't like it when I get the list from school that, like, for, <laughs> you know, like, that's like the, hey, and actually I haven't even looked for the one from my school yet, and I need to look for it, and I know I need to get stuff because... I was at Target the other day, just and the getting whole some store things. Is no, back to school. I'm just saying, like, I realized there were people there, like in the pencil aisle, getting stuff, and I was like, oh no, they're getting stuff for back to school, and I don't even know what the list is. Yeah, you, you do I do really, have a you. You do not like summer to end. I and don't. You drag it out truly as far as possible. I, do. I really enjoy my kids being home for summer. It simplifies life a ton. I know that's not true for everyone. I know for people who like have to, you know, work out child, work care out child care, and yeah. all of that, it's really challenging. Um, I am, I am lucky to be able to have a job where I can work that out, and I've got older kids too. Sure. So you know, all you, of those. You don't things. have as much like they can take care of themselves. Um, I did. I have ever. I don't know if I've ever said this on the radio, so I apologize if I have. But I do remember. A time when I was in elementary school, probably like around fifth grade or something like that, when I realized that not everybody had the summer off. And I was like, wait a second, when I grow up, I might I might not have the summer off? It was a horrible, horrible revelation. Yeah, it is interesting. We kind of like create this, I don't know, indoctrination on some level to our children that summertime should be just about playing, but I don't know. I guess live it up while you can. It's interesting this time. Wow, you of really year. just went deep there. What? What is what? that? What is this deep or to indoctrination? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's interesting this time of year because I can tell in the mornings because I get up earlier than you. That's yes, true. Like just this week. Yeah. I'm like, oh, fall is right around the corner because it's still dark outside. Yes. Yes. And. Um, well, and, and and the temperature has dropped, and who knows? I mean, we all know those of us that have lived in Spokane for any period of time know that September is one of the most beautiful months of the year in Spokane, and the heat comes back sometimes. Yeah. I'm hoping that we don't break over a hundred anymore. The rest that would be of the nice year, if we don't have to deal with that. Who knows? So here's something else that's happened this summer, and uh, it's very exciting for me is that my dad and my stepmom were able to visit here in Spokane. Um, they've been here for the past few days and I thought it would be kind of fun to just talk about, okay, so these guys are visiting from Italy. They've been living there for five years. Um, what are the things that we did with them? What did we do? And I thought I would highlight most of the, mostly I'm going to talk about restaurants and I'm going to highlight one particular food and drink is a really important thing to do with the people you love. I thought it was also interesting as we were preparing for them to come, we're Uh like, okay, what are the things that we want to propose to do yes. with them? Like, mm-hmm. what is, you know, Spokane has changed in the last few years since they've been here, mm-hmm. and especially over the last five years since they've been in Italy. And so, what kind of showing off our city? Yeah. It was and, an interesting. But the reality exercise. is, we didn't actually get to do almost any of that because it was more human focused. Yeah, of course. And so it, it ended up being restaurants. So, let's talk about. <laughs> Uh, some of the things that we did. So the first night we did Benedito's. If you have not been to Benedito's, shame on you. It's a classic here in Spokane. And uh, here are my favorites: uh, the Grand Boulevard Pizza with no green peppers and the Pesto Ranch. Like they do it with their beer buddies. They do it with their salads, which are really good. And I save it because I always have a little bit of extra and I save it and I use it on other things. Or it sits in the refrigerator until we throw it away. I do I, I, I do that with a lot of sauces, but I really <laughs> do try and use that pesto ranch. All right. There are two locations for uh, Benedito's too. There's the one on Lincoln on the South Hill and then there's mm-hmm. one down on Sprague, which is their brew pub down to, like It's bigger. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a bigger cool. location. It has a really big patio out on mm-hmm. the back. Mm-hmm. So They used to have something way up north, but apparently doesn't exist anymore. All right. Another place... <laughs> that is one of their favorites when they come here is Madeline's. Mm-hmm. Madeline's. Holly loves that place. Yeah, it's so great. Uh, it has lots of pastries and stuff like that. But I will tell you, anything with their breakfast sausage, because I think they might make it in-house, but if they don't, it's very artisan and it is delicious. Really good. Really good. Um, highly recommend Madeline's. Um, they said that they went to Brew Bros. 
And Brew Bros, they said some of the best avocado yeah. toast that they've had. So, way to go, Brew Bros. I've never, I've never had been, their avocado toast. I've never I've been, been there, there for anything. Yeah, I've been there. I've had a meeting down there, a coffee meeting. He does a lot of those. Um, Twigs. They went to Twigs, which is, of course, a... It's kind of a Spokane a, favorite it is, classic. It is. And honestly, their classic, their burger is quite delicious. But my absolute... I will go there for just this one thing. And it is their sticky cookie dessert. Oh, my gosh. My whole family loves this. Oh, sticky it's cookie. really it's really popular. And what's, <laughs> what's interesting is the ravenous <laughs> way, especially if there's yeah. a sharing, because they're we very big. Share. They're huge. But to have two people sharing, the, uh, it, it's just like, because the faster you eat, the more, the more you get. You get. Mm-hmm. Yep. They also went to Ben and Jerry's ice cream. And uh, I asked one of my nieces, what was your favorite thing? She got the Netflix and Chill, which is an ice cream that has pretzels and fudge brownie and peanut butter in it. And I was like, that sounds amazing. Uh, another they place. They pay Netflix to use their name. I don't know. Well, they might actually. Or maybe they get paid. I don't have any idea how Ben and Ben and Jerry's works out their um, money situation because they have people you know who design ice cream. Anyway, we won't go into that. Uh, Gander and Ryegrass, which honest, be perfectly honest, I have not been there. However, I do know that they get their bread from across the street at Wanderlust, and that bread, their homemade bread, is delicious. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure they make their sandwiches and things like that with that. So that's my highlight of the Gander and Ryegrass, which is also next door to Uncle's Games, which is one of my favorite places in Spokane. Um, they also went to the... Tra- we, all, we actually all went to the Trailbreaker Cidery. So Trailbreaker Cidery is in Liberty Lake. It's a beautiful building. They have yeah, that's the first time we've been there. Twenty different ciders, and on tap. And we went there with our office, and we do it every uh, once a month on the third Thursday. We we go someplace. So if you ever want to come and join us, please do. Um, but we get the popular ones were spicy peach, yep, and the cucumber mint seemed to be really popular. But you liked something that was like a dry. I, liked the, um, I can't remember now. It was like smooth and dry or something like that. Okay. But, All right. Hey, you know, some of them were just too sweet for me, the ciders. I just didn't I like know. the sweet. The, I know. The spicy peach was nice because it kind of like burned your face when you were drinking it, which is <laughs> helpful to get rid of the sweetness. But it's still, it was still peachy. So Yeah. So the last restaurant that we have is the Iron Goat. And the Iron Goat is one of our favorite places. It's really close to our house. And my absolute favorite thing to get there that it seems to be not seasonal, like it's all Always year round. Always on the menu. Because they do have a wonderful curry, but it's not on the menu right now, uh, is the banh mi pizza. It is so good. Get out of here. It's the best. It's so good. And I got some other stuff, and I got the banh mi pizza for you know sharing and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is the best. And, and well, just, since you're talking about Iron Goat, the reason yeah. that we, one of the reasons, obviously we really like that place, but one mm-hmm. of the reasons we picked that is because we were doing a promotional video for one of our downtown listings. Right. And in September, I think on September 20th or something like that, I can find the exact date, mm-hmm. um, the West End Oktoberfest is happening. And right. there are five breweries participating in that. Uh, Whistlepunk, uh, Brick West, the Golden Handle, River City, and Iron Goat. And That's so cool. If you're interested in that, you can find that uh, video on our YouTube, and we did just kind of walk around to some of those. It's on breweries. our YouTube, and I bet it will be on our Facebook page oh, sure. as yeah. well. Sure. Um, okay, so the last thing I want to talk about as far as their visit goes is uh, the Davenport Tower. So we've got three Davenport. We've got the original Davenport, the Davenport Tower, and the, the Davenport Grand. Right? Yeah. That's what I call it. Okay. Well, they usually stay in the Davenport, Davenport Tower. And remember, these guys live in Italy. They've traveled a lot of places. This is quite literally their favorite hotel in the world. Or maybe not my dad's, but certainly my stepmom Holly's In favorite. the world? In the world. She said that. Yes. Oh. Well, my dad said that. And I've heard that. On her that's behalf. On her behalf. Yes. And so they absolutely love it. It's... Good job, super, Walt Worthy. Yeah, it's super comfortable. It's just a great feeling. And then, of course, you're right downtown. Mm-hmm. And let me just say this. Matt and I have actually done, like, you know what? We really can't go anywhere when we don't have time for an anniversary or something special. And so we've actually stayed at the Davenport. We haven't never stayed in the Tower, but we stayed in the Grand and we stayed in the Original just to have a weekend away. Yeah, actually, we did stay in the Tower 
years and years ago. Oh gosh, there you go. We've so we've stayed in all three of them, and they're they're great. They're, it is. If you're from Spokane, sometimes you just need to be a tourist in your own yes. town. Yes, and that's what this is all about, right? You're seeing it through someone else's eyes, yeah. and it's we've got. Gosh, look at all this, and we had so many other suggestions of places to go and eat, and oh, we should eat. we should tag that for a future show where we're like, if you're visiting Spokane, these are the places that we would want to. Yeah, take we you. could like we could like that'd be fun. Yeah. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right, Matt. Let's let's talk about the market. I know Should we talk some, about the real estate market? I think it's a good idea. Um, all right. So that's why I suggested it. We're so smart. <laughs> we ended last week's show talking a little bit about uh, July numbers, and um, we briefly mentioned mm-hmm. the average and median sale price. Right. How they have cl- just climbed so much, and those charts um, should be on our Facebook page, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can find them. We can get them to you if you need. If you can't find them easily, uh, so I'm just gonna circle back to that okay. really fast. So, July numbers, Spokane Association of Realtors um, posted the median sales price three hundred and ninety five thousand dollars. Okay. Um, and then I think that was like a twenty some, almost a thirty percent increase year over year. Yep. And then the average sale price was 417,136 and that was also an astronomical jump. I mean last yeah. year it was 329,500. Wow. So that's almost a $100,000 increase. And the demand drives the market. So right. supply and demand and as we have had a reduction in supply consistently for the last 12 months, the obviously the values go up, mm-hmm. right? Because you've got people in the market that are buying people that are moving into the, from out of area, and not just people moving from out of area, but that obviously um, has something to do with it. What I want to talk about right now, though, is this feeling of, and we go from feelings to real data, but right. there is a yeah. feeling yes. okay. in the air of like a balancing of the market. And it's not just in Spokane, I mean, it's na- nationwide. And the reason I say that is because National Association of Realtors just put out an article for us real estate professionals this week talking about hmm, is is the run over or things slowing down sure. and you know this is not a sky is falling moment but no uh, so I decided also- to pull from that and inspired me to say okay well what's going on in Spokane yes and um, what were you about to say though well I was just gonna say and we also <laughs> know that August is seasonally it is a slowdown in the market period. So we know that from years and years of data. And so we have to take that into account as well. I we think. do, but we also have to look at year over year numbers. And I think that this Correct. is all the of a story. Correct, and the slowdown. Okay, right? cool. So, cool. <laughs> so here's what, Excuse me. Um, if we look at active listings, mm-hmm. and we'll put this chart out on our Facebook as well. Um, in July of 2020, our active listings dropped and they continued to go down, 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 down. Uh, February of this year was actually the lowest. Okay. Um, but that part of that is also seasonal too, but it was significantly lower than February the year before and even a significant amount lower than the February the year before that. So okay. it's not just seasonal. There was a real low point, 133 active listings the month of February 2021. Okay. So, uh, but as we moved into spring, it stayed really, really low. So March was at 209, April was at 188, and that was kind of the end of the lowness, and every month thereafter, it has started to climb. Okay. And so what we're seeing between April um, of this year, where we had 188, and um, July of this year, it went up to 374. Okay. That is a 41% change. Now, here's what's really interesting to me. If you look at what April of 2021 was versus April of 2022, or sorry, 2022, if I can tell the future, uh, 2020, (laughs) um, it was 69% below 2020's numbers. It was that much lower. And you'll see it visually. You'll be able to see it on the graph, right? I'm talking on the radio. That's huge. Okay. So that's a big gap between active listings. In July, Mm -hmm. it was only 28% below. Oh, okay. So there has... So the gap has closed. Yeah. And if you look at... It is closing. Yeah. So if you look April 2020 
2021 to July of 2021, there was a 98.9% increase of active listings between those months. Okay. So that's almost double, right? That's right. almost 100% increase in active listings. Okay. So you look at that, and even though our average and median sales prices have been going up, if you look at our average sale price, it actually was about $1,000 less in July than it was in June. Okay. And so... We're, we're here trying to uh, predict the future. And the, the question mark right now for everyone is, this a temporary slowdown? Right. Is it, what, what, what kind of a shift is this? Because it's beginning to move into more of a balanced market. I mean, right. I mean, I mean, it's not really balanced. Not what, really. It's just more balanced than it was. Yeah. So let's just talk about <laughs> right now in time. So these okay. were numbers the SAR put out for the end of July. Um, active listings on the market, 562. Now I want to pause for a second because I use a segment of the market every week to be consistent in the radio show and it is not always exactly the same. It's not exactly the same as what the SAR is putting out. So I don't want people to think, oh my God, they went from 374 up to 562 because that's not the case. But it has definitely gone up because I looked back at my own number Numbers. set and at the end of June, we had 348. At the end of July, we had 424. And now we're at 562. Okay. That's a 60% increase since the end of June in inventory. Okay. So it's going up. We're at 0.75 months of inventory. Which two things, that means two things. <laughs> One, we still have a very, very low number of properties. There's still a very low inventory. Mm -hmm. However... When you went from 0.46 to 0.75, you can see that that is a that's a that's bump, a right? So it's going to feel. So this is back to what I was saying at the beginning. This is going to feel right. like things are oh, what's what's going on? We don't have a bazillion offers on a house, or maybe the days on market are going up a little bit. Sure, to ten days. <laughs> <laughs> the average, uh, what did it? What was it? The median days on market for active listings right now is eleven. So you're pretty close. There you go. Um, so those are, I mean, I think we just have to median active list price is still up. Median sold price is still up for the last six months and it has gone up pretty consistently. You know, if, if I'm looking at my three months, June, July, and August, right, it was 342 was the median sold. 361 was the median sold and 370 was the median sold. So we're bumping up you know, $10,000 or more every month yeah. in median sold price. So it'll be very interesting to, to see where things go. So what does this mean for buyers and sellers? Mm. I think that at the end of the day, it's like, great, Matt, thanks for dumping a bunch of numbers on us, <laughs> but yeah. what's the point? So I think for sellers, now more than ever, it's really important. It's vital to price your home according to the market and right. accurately. If you're, if you're like... Reaching for the stars. Reaching for the stars. <laughs> then it's likely that it will sit on the market and you'll have to make a significant price reduction. You're just, because if, even if it just kind of flattens out for a little bit, you're going to be playing catch up. Yeah. And so aggress mm. being, being more aggressive in your pricing will yeah. still allow for you to have potentially multiple offers right. and better terms and things like that. So it's, it's really important to read the market as we move into the future and you know, up until this point, everybody's like, well, let's just stretch it a little bit because everything's been yes. going up so quickly. Right. We probably can get it. Mm -hmm. If you stretch right now, you're going to be sitting on the market. Can I, can I Please? give a little, Absolutely. okay. So that same set of parents that I was talking about, my dad and my stepmom, Holly, years and years ago, they were, um, in their home in Seattle and they decided to sell it because they were going to move. And the, uh, they decided to move before they sold it because they wanted to kind of get it ready and all those kinds of things. And the market was just like crazy hot, 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 right? In, in Seattle. And this is this one must have been 2006, 2007, yeah, something like that. Right so you all know the stories. But here's what they kept saying is they said they put the, they put the house on the market the day after it was hot. <laughs> Basically, when everything fell off, that's when they put their house on the market. And what they did is they kept... They were chasing. They were they were starting here, and they exactly what you said. They kept chasing the market, trying to oh, let's drop the price, but it was just a little too but it late. Was already, a little the, too the market was little, already dropping. Yes, and so yes, and so that's a great example. 
And again, we're we don't know saying, where the future yeah. is going to be. Yeah. And we're not saying that there's going to be a fall off. Just in a class uh, yesterday, the instructor was talking about how over the last handful of years, nationally, we're 38 million housing units short of demand. Right. Right. So, so I'm not saying that that's going to happen. There's, it's unlikely to be a cliff. Right. But you don't want to be chasing the market even yeah. if it's just kind of a flat Keep market, watching this right? radio show or watching the radio show. Watch that the radio show. That is an oxymoron. If you can do that, that's, I guess you, yeah. But keep, because we will continue to do this. And I think that by keeping a really close eye on it and, you know, like, you know, your finger on the pulse, I think that you will be able to help you'll be able to help yourself understand what the market is yeah. actually going to do. So for buyers, um, real quick, this is an opportunity to be successful in the market, and especially for first-time home buyers that are worn out and have really pulled themselves out of the market. Like all, I think right now, mm-hmm. we don't know if we've passed the peak for 2021 or not, but really my, my advice is to get out there, either start or continue your home search. You know, Interest rates are still incredible. Um, you may not have to compete with as many other offers or yeah. any offers. Yeah. And what an opportunity to have a little bit more of a normal buying scenario. Correct. Uh, you're probably not going to be getting a killer deal. So lowballing a seller right now is not necessarily, I mean, you can do it if you want to, but you, uh, it would be unlikely unless there's a reason. Yeah. Unless it's real. I mean, you know, unless it's overpriced, right? Because overpriced can, or sitting on the market for an exorbitant amount of time. Which in this market is, you know, maybe 30 days would be an exorbitant amount of time. You know, maybe even a little bit less than that. But, um, you know, if 10 days, I wouldn't be necessarily lowballing people. Yeah. So sellers, price it right. Buyers, uh, take a deep breath and get back in the market. I know you're yes. fatigued right now. Yes. But um, whether this is seasonal or this is kind of a flattening for a, a while here, mm-hmm. um, I think it's time to jump back in or... Stay the course. I think that's good. Very good. Awesome. Wait, you got... Back to me? Yeah, back to you. All right. So we have been doing our series on redecorating your master bedroom. And that, of course, expanded to, well, what what does that mean? And what are the things that we should think about? And besides just, you know, your bedspread, for instance. So um, this is actually week four of this information. Uh, we have talked about... Um, design styles, all kinds of different design styles that you could potentially do. We've talked about uh, strategies on how to go about just starting. So go back and watch some of that. Um, you know, the the big thing for me is that when you go onto something like Pinterest or House, or even if you go to, like, let's say you go to the IKEA website, right? You can see rooms, and they'll have it all decorated, and you can f- figure out what you what you connect with. You will learn so much. By just going and looking at spreads yeah. of rooms, and you'll go, oh, I don't like that. Oh, I really like that. Or I like that little piece. So um, we kind of talk about tackling that stuff. We talk about paint and how it is the the thing that sets the mood for the whole room and how important that is. Um, yeah. So now we're going to get into uh, the things, the last few things that I wasn't able to cover before, and we're going to start with the area rug. So now. Lots of you um, may have carpet in your bedroom, but there's a lot of people that also have hard surfaces in their Mm -hmm. bedroom. So you can actually do it either way. I've certainly seen people that have carpet and they still put an area rug down. I'm not so much into that, but if you do have wood floors or you have um, some kind of a, a hard surface, a rug is really nice because that is the one place where you are gonna probably every morning step onto a the floor without any socks on. And so you want it to be warm. You want it to be cozy. You want it to be something that feels good beneath your toes. Um, So one of the things that you can do is making sure, and we're going to talk about bed size in a minute, but making sure that you, your carpet extends 18 inches on every all three sides of your bed so that you have plenty of space to step out and walk around it and all those kinds of things. So 18 inches is what they recommend. So again, that comes back to measuring your room, measuring your room, sure. doing a little, you know, little okay, paper. my little graph paper. I want to say one other thing that I've seen recently with uh, rugs, it's become kind of this trendy thing, is that you're doing a, like a natural, like, 
I think rattan is the wrong word, but you know, like that grass kind of carpet. Okay. And then people are putting a, like a more traditional carpet on top of that with a board, like a big border. And it looks really oh, cool. So you're basically doing two, two layers, two layers. It might not work necessarily for your room, but you know, it's just something to consider. I, I've seen it and it looks pretty spectacular. Hmm. Um, okay. So always being considerate of your feet when you're talking about a rug, making sure that you're getting something that feels good. Sometimes that like a polyester or something like that ugh, just does not feel good. So going with a natural fiber that's soft or a little bit of cushion. Are those more expensive to go with natural fibers? Yeah, probably so. But there, oh my gosh, there's so many good deals out there. Like Wayfair is a great place to find stuff. Um, more expensive places like Anthropology or Pottery Barn, of course, they're going to be more expensive. But I found some great stuff for what I would consider incredibly good deals. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I do is actually put a a pad under my carpet. So I don't just do the slippy thing, but I actually get like a felt pad, maybe a half inch, and that gives you a little sure. bit more cushion as well. All right. So moving on to bed size. You guys, everybody wants, you want the largest bed possible, right? Because it's comfortable to spread out in your bed. However, don't get a bed so large for your room that it's ridiculous. So even for couples, like I've seen, I've gone into people's homes where they've got a king size bed and it's like pushed in the corner and it's like a little strip because they just really want they that. They wanted the king size bed, but they really don't have the room for it. Correct. And I, I think that you have to, you know, take into, certainly if you're selling your house, don't do that. Like get a smaller bed in there, make it feel like a little more room. Yeah. Um, but just be careful about that. You want to be able to walk around all sides of your bed and to be able to have a nightstand of some sort. All right. So that leads into furniture. Let's talk about that. There are three essential things in a bedroom. Okay. Number one, a bed. That's good. Number two, nightstands. Okay. To be able to set something, a glass of water, yep. even if it's just small, right? And number three is a dresser. Now, I'm kind of going to put that aside a little bit because I know a lot of people do different things. Like they've got cubes and they've got like those pull-out baskets for their stuff. They've got their um, dresser in their closet, which is something that we do. Like we have a dresser in our closet. Um, so it's not 100% necessary. So then... Those are the three things that you've got to have or you most people need to have in their bedroom. Then you have to, depending on your space, you may be able to add other things. But again, be careful of the room. So putting a bench at the end of your bed is a really popular thing. Having a vanity is popular. Sure. Um, some people will put a piece of exercise equipment in their room because it's like the best way for them to exercise. But again, hmm. <laughs> don't like, don't make your don't, don't make it so cluttery that it's yeah it's supposed to be a, a retreat good space it's, yeah you. it's supposed to be a place where you feel like you can relax and if you've got too many things in there it's not going to feel that way some people will if they've got a really large room they'll put a sitting area in there as well be careful of sitting areas and extra things in your room because you know what ends up happening it's the catch all mm -hmm. right people are coming over you take that bunch of paperwork that you haven't done anything with or buy, whatever it is and you like stick it on on the uh, sitting area sure. and then you don't do anything with it and so you have to be kind of careful with that I think as well but um, there was one other thing oh of course a lot of people do do a TV stand or they put a TV on their dresser sure. and I know some, a lot of people put them on the wall though on the wall. on the wall here's one thing I'll say about that is a lot of people say you shouldn't do that I'm like I love watching a good movie in bed because then I'm like, I'm tired and I just roll over and go to sleep. It's great. All right. Um, another thing that, that you should do when you are getting ready to do this is tackle the clutter. Okay. And I'm not going to go into this in detail, but please tackle your clutter. And we'll talk about that. I think I'm going to do another whole thing on that sure. in another episode. Which um, would be a great preparation for getting your house ready to sell. That's correct. So it would be dual purposed. Then the last thing on my list is choosing furniture. Do not do matchy match. Matchy match is I go into the store and I look at a I look at a setup and I go, I'll take it all. <laughs> you know, you get the dresser, the nightstands, the bed, they all match, a vanity, I mean who knows what else. That is actually quite an outdated way of choosing furniture for yeah. a bedroom. So really consider like 
curating your pieces and going, I'm going to get this bed and I'm going to get these different nightstands. And for those people that are not great at that, what you said at the beginning, which is going to the stores or the websites and looking at what somebody else has done to yes. display their stuff. And really pay attention. Get inspiration. Yes. Yeah, to pay attention to, oh, wow, that's different than that and that's different than that. And if you're not going to buy a whole suite of furniture, what my suggestion to you would be is consider moving some of the pieces. So you already have some matchy matchy stuff. Move some of those pieces into other rooms. Like start mixing and matching mm -hmm. the stuff you already have in your house and it will feel more curated. It'll feel more um, like designer because that is the modern. Modern design right now is to uh, have different pieces that complement each other. So that's it. That's the... Uh -huh. That is the wrap-up of the Master Design. Thank you so much for joining us. If yeah. you have any questions, give us a call. Visit us on social media. 509-62-HOUSE. You can just search us on any of the websites or social media. Evo Real, E-V-O-R-E-A-L. Okay. Have a great Saturday. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.